Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our Azure series. Uh, this part is now just on budgeting and billing. Uh, this is pretty much a very important part of the series. <laughs> I know it's probably not the most exciting, but this is where uh, you see in the industry, a lot of people go wrong with their initial cloud experience and they don't get their billing and budgeting set right from the start. Um, it can put off uh, the whole experience of moving to the cloud and especially if finance is involved and they see uh, the spend that might be going through it might be hard to get approval for a other cloud projects so you want to make sure this is done right from the start um, this is going to be fairly short because it's a pretty simple topic um, but a lot of people just don't do it so um, you can follow me along if you want but I'm just going to cover over uh, the billing dashboard um setting budgets and setting alerts and stuff like that so let's jump straight into it shall we so what we can do is you can go down to cost management down here or you can go to your subscription and then once your subscription loads you can then go to um, the cost analysis and stuff here so if we go to cost analysis and then in here what we can do is like like i said if you remember last time everything happens within a subscription right so i'm just seeing the billing for this one subscription um if i had more than one they would all appear to kind of down here so then you can kind of get a grasp for how each subscription and what's uh, each subscription is um spending and stuff like that uh so this straight away might help you define how you want to do your subscriptions have everyone under the one subscription and then you can filter it out by like tagging and stuff like that I haven't really gone over that yet but you know even if you've got everyone under one subscription you can still um, split out the billing quite nicely and track the spend um, i can go over that later when we start actually deploying resources and i'll show you tagging and stuff like that um, but yeah so everything happens under a subscription so pretty much all i want to show you is that on the initial page, what you can get is your cost analysis breakdown. So this is the start of the month. You can see this isn't uh, my spend going, it costs six cents today, and then it costs 23 cents the next. This is actually just accumulated. So just over time, this is my spend for the month. Um, you've got nice little graphs here. So you can group it by um, resources, tags. So say if I had, I, I want to group all the tags with uh, say, um, um what should i say uh for project 100 or something like that's a specific project you can see the spend just for anything with that project tag uh, so you can get pretty um uh you can get pretty good insights but it, the billing is as only as good as you make it so if you are really efficient with using tagging and stuff for your resources then your billing is really efficient right but if you don't tag anything and everything's just chucked into this a subscription you can still see the spend but you have no idea where it is right you might be able to see uh the resources that are using it but if you're not putting the tags in and you're not doing a proper naming convention it's yeah it's it's not as good as if you were if you had a proper name and convention and stuff because then your billing would look amazing right you can track everything um but anyway so what i was showing you is that you can change all this so i can see what my spend is daily uh and then this will change to graph once it decides to load see and then all of this stuff you can change the months the dates you can export this so you can download it as a graph um, what you can also do is um, you can break it down by resources export that there's a lot of stuff you can do um, but yeah so down here is it's pretty interactive right so you can see the resources straight away the big spenders um, but I don't have a lot in here so you're not seeing a, a crazy amount so even on your free tier you'll get stuff like this uh, because the spend that you are using is free credit so it's it's really good way to start getting an idea on what your spend might look like um, and kind of just setting good practices, right? But anyway, um, so straight away you'll see that I actually have a budget. Um, it's called spend alert. So based off my budget as yours gone, right? So he's got a $20 a month cap for his budget. So they've just set me a dollar a day. Like if my spend goes over a dollar a day, they're gonna let me know because then my spend will, will be forecasted to go over that $20 for the month, right? So that was just like an automatic alert that they kind of set up, which was nice. Um, but yeah, so 
a lot of stuff you can do in here, so I really encourage you to play around with this section. But let's move on to budgets. So regardless of what you're doing, you should always have a budget in here. Um, even if you kind of have free reign over your um, tenant, which that would be nice, right? But you should always have some sort of budget on here. So I've got $20, so I'm aware if I ever start, if my spend for the month starts reaching towards my budget, I can just see, oh crap, what is using that, right? So I can quickly uh, clean it up, delete whatever resources really um, consuming a lot of my spend. So this is real simple to do, setting up a, an alert uh, uh, budget. So you can just go add and you just name it something, right? So test, uh, test budget. Um, I want this to reset every billing month. Um, set the expiration date for this budget. And then you just give it an amount, so say $100. See, so now it's going to, um, it now has a budget for the billing month of $100, stuff like that, right? Um, or if I say, uh, I don't know, a dollar, you can see, oh, um, I'm already forecasted. Oh, I'm actually over my budget or something, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's, they're so easy to do. Um, same with alerts. So what you can do is if this budget does trigger, um, say you can have uh, different stages of your budget. So if my budget goes over 10%, 50%, uh, and then 100%, um, I want to know. And then you can have an action group to send to some emails, uh, some email addresses or distribution groups and stuff like that. So that is how easy it is to create a budget and you should always have a budget regardless um, free tier or what because like I said if you're on your free tier this is the best time to start up best practices so see yourself one of like I don't know $30 or $20 or $10 a month um, and then you start getting those emails and you start seeing what your spend is actually looking like uh, so then once you move down to the free tier kind of get a better idea on okay this is what our spend should be let's put a budget on it so then if we ever go over it we get alerts and we can start straight away remediating it rather than waiting for your invoice to come in the month and you're like holy crap i've just spent like five grand um so yeah that's actually that's as simple as it is um cost analysis again gives you a breakdown of your uh, overall scope of your um subscription uh, and you can change it to line column graphs whatever um, and you set your budget which i showed you real quick and easy and your cost alert so if you actually get any alerts triggered um they will show up here and you can go oh okay we've gone over 20 percent or something like that uh, and you can see this is the budget that it's tracking down here so yeah simple as that um that's pretty much it for setting budgets uh if you've got any questions around it just leave some comments down below but again it's so simple but so many businesses do not do it or they don't do it right and then they end up spending so much money on unnecessary stuff so yeah get the best practice done now and you'll be ahead of a lot of people already so yeah right guys i'll see you in the next video